I never thought I would see this again. Let's see what the fuck this nigga's talking about. One of the best things that can happen to a young basketball player in their career is get compared to Michael Jordan. One of the worst things that can happen to a young player in their career is get compared to Michael Jordan. For every player that gets compared to MJ and is successful in the NBA, there's five more who fall a mile short and make the comparison seem blasphemous in the first- I agree. That's why you can't compare Michael Jordan and LeBron James because they're in two different fucking spectrums, nigga. Michael Jordan is the greatest offensive, defensive, killer, demigod, attacker of all time like you want to think about a basketball player with 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 anger and and compassion and nigga i ain't scared of you i'm hit i'm taking the shot that's michael jordan but you want to think about the most complete player six foot eight 235 pounds fast iq of a god <laughs> strong could shoot could dribble could defend one through five, number one leading scorer in the world. That's LeBron James. You see the difference? You got the killer and you got the soldier. That's the that's a great analogy, bro. Oh my god, I'm so smart. Michael I said Michael Jackson, sorry. Michael Jordan is a killer, bro. He's a killer. He's gonna look for it. He's a hunter. He's gonna look for it. You feel me? I don't want to say he is a king. I don't want to consider him the king. I want to consider him a killer. Like he's a killer. But like in an army, you need a soldier. And the perfect soldier, you know, the one that isn't afraid to let the other man, you know, he isn't afraid to step back. He's aware. The soldier, that's LeBron, bro. Which one would you rather be? Would you rather be a soldier or a killer? First place. Anthony Edwards is the latest player added to this list of hopeful Jordan success. This nigga is like Michael Jordan definitely clapped his mom's cheeks. Like I ain't gonna lie to you. Your mom definitely got clapped. You got the semen of MJ, nigga. You got 23 written in your DNA, nigga. How many chromosomes is there? 23? It's because of this nigga, bro. Only this time, it feels real. I mean, the memes and the jokes were funny at first, but now this is just getting uncanny. The highlights, the trash talking, the swagger, the charisma. Being compared we to the best a nigga player like to this, chat. We needed, we needed a nigga who could, bro. Cause everybody in the NBA, right? This is my problem. Everybody in the NBA is so like, like my nigga. Where's the like? You's a bitch. Like just, I shot a three in your face, nigga. You pussy. Like you pussy. You can't guard me, bro. You can't guard me. Like, there, there's no type of, like, animosity no more on the court, bro. And Michael Jordan really brought that shit. Like, he'll hit a shot and call you a little nigga. What's that little nigga name? Muggsy Boses? Nigga was like, get your little ass off of me. And he shot that fadeaway, bro. That's why I like Anthony Edwards so much. Now, and I kind of see why niggas is glazing Michael Jordan. Because he's just like, fuck it. Like, he doesn't give a fuck. Like, he's a god. He's a god. But LeBron James is just better. Ever touch a basketball is an impossible task for any player to live up to. And yet we can't help but to make the comparison. So how similar is Anthony Edwards to a young Michael Jordan? Is this comparison even warranted? Or is this gold standard still as unattainable and unrealistic as ever? Eh, we gonna see. Today's video is sponsored no, by Julia Look at Beckett, you trying to scam me, boy. Ash, bonus is making the best college basketball player in the country. And with his six foot five inch all in one shooting guard package, it was only a matter of time before the infamous comparison to Michael Jordan was made. Later on, we would learn that despite his incredible skill set and Hall of Fame pedigree, the, the Michael Jordan comp was never really warranted. You might be familiar with this player. His name was Ray Allen. And looking back, what? Ray Allen was compared to Michael Jordan? Oh, nah, nigga, wow. You would make me, I, I would think it would be like a, how tall is Vince Carter? I would think that would be like a Vince Carter type of player. 
Really? I mean, then again, Ray Allen used to yam it, bro. I never knew that. Like, I found out maybe six years ago that Ray Allen could really dunk. Like, back in, like, his high school years and stuff, that nigga could, he could yam it, bro. But to compare him to Michael Jordan? All right, bro. Outside of playing the same position, there wasn't much he and MJ had in common. But this wasn't the first and surely not the last time a player say, received a Jordan call. A in 1986, Ron Harper might have been the first player to ever be called the next Michael Jordan. The closest so this was six Harper, the eighth player taken over on the 1986 NBA draft has often been compared to the flashy Jordan, a 30 year guard who is one of the league's most versatile performers. This Harper ever got to Jordan was playing with him. Harold Miner was compared heavily to Jordan coming out of USC in 1992. One season and a bad injury later, Miner would become a cautionary tale for anyone eager to dub a player as the next Michael Jordan. This did not stop people from dubbing players as the next Michael Jordan. In 1993, Penny Hardaway received the comp. The next year, it was Grant Hill. A couple years after that, it was Jerry Stackhouse. But he, you, know, you notice how he mentioned two people that got injured. Like, what if they didn't? You feel me? Because I heard a lot of Penny. Penny, Penny, if he wasn't injured, I heard Penny was tough. Like, Penny was really tough, apparently. Like, he was, he was Penny, John Starks, Grant Hill. I heard them niggas was tough, bro. Not injured? Them niggas was nasty. Now, I don't know. Yo, my nigga. It's an average night in New York. Also, by the way, guys, um, I'm recording this. I know you guys niggas, I know y'all niggas watching me like, yo, why the fuck is he look down? Bro, because my New York Knicks got cooked by the Pacers, bro. Uh, they shot 70% from the field the entire game they literally barely missed a shot the pacers fuck out of here bro but back to what i was saying in 1997 vince carter was named the next michael jordan and this time around it actually felt like it might become a real thing a six foot six inch high flying shooting guard out of north carolina that sounds awfully familiar. That sounds very but familiar. despite putting together a Hall of Fame career, Vince Carter, just like every player that came before him, came up was short. in fact not best the dunker of all time, though. No debate. One of the best dunkers of all time. Next, Michael Jordan. Around the turn of the century, it was Kobe Bryant who was next up as Jordan's successor. Jordan was out of the NBA by now, and the league was in desperate search of a new poster child. Kobe Bryant came just in the nick of time. Kobe mm -hmm. said he modeled his game after MJ, a statement that seemed like a far-fetched attempt to draw comparisons to the greatest player of all time from a 19-year-old kid. The but with suit. every passing season, Kobe hadn't R. just Kobe. become like Mike. He became a carbon copy of Mike. 20 years later, Kobe Bryant built a legacy of his own, but he still remains the closest thing we have ever seen to Jordan. This nigga took, he took literally this nigga's entire fucking everything and just said copy bro like that's that's the only comparison to ever ex to ever exceed or even meet michael jordan's standard kobe bryant anthony edwards though bro you want to talk about like swagger and just i'm a fucking cook nigga that's 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 mj little son bro because nigga He's just going stupid, bro. Ant is going stupid, bro. Who would have thought, bro? I ain't gonna lie. If that nigga wins a, if that nigga wins a ring, though, he's definitely the face of the league. Fuck a Nikola Jokic, a Luka Doncic. I don't want these white niggas take over the league. It's a black sport, nigga. Since Fuck then, there's been a few more ill-advised next Michael Jordans. LeBron has been compared to Michael to the extent that you can't say one of their names in a sentence without mentioning the other. Dwayne, because he's the better, the better player. LeBron is a better player. Feel me? If you have a if you have a stat between Michael Jordan and LeBron, who would you pick? I'd pick LeBron all day. He way latest to carry next Michael Jordan weight. Never knew that. Way generated Jordan comps after his championship run in 2006, but that's about it. After two decades of attempting to find the next Michael Jordan, the basketball world settled into the fact that maybe the next Michael Jordan didn't exist. And even worse, giving a young kid the comparison was almost a curse that would mentally handicap them from becoming their own player. After LeBron in the mid-2000s, it became this sort of unwritten rule to compare any player to Michael Jordan. Not only because it usually didn't make any sense, but because the track record of Jordan's successors was looking pretty bleak. 
Oddly enough, most players who received the comp didn't actually play or act or look or carry themselves like Mike. They were just really good, sort of, kind of like Mike. Which brings us to today and this guy, who is the first player in about 15 years to be tagged with the infamous Next Michael Jordan label. I mean, come on. We all see it. The similarities are striking, but due to the history of this comparison, no one wanted to be the first to actually say it. But in the midst of the postseason run he is putting together right now, we're all thinking the same thing. Anthony Edwards reminds us of Michael Jordan. And this time, we don't need to be baited into this comparison or hastily run- Like we're fucking looking at it. Like, look at his fucking facial structure, bro. He just has a nice little low tape of fade. You feel me? He got a little nice tip fade. But that's Michael Jordan's son with a little bit of good looks in him, you know? Michael Jordan, ugliest. Imagine Michael Jordan with hair. It'd just be an uglier Anthony Edwards. Literally. But this nigga here, bro, I don't know what the fuck happened, bro. 2024, that nigga unlocked his 23rd chromosome, his 23rd gene, and just said, fuck it, nigga, I'm cooking everybody. KD, fucking gone. Thank God. For any fucking KD lovers, how can you love a six foot bitch, a six foot 11 sack of bitch? Devin Booker, pussy nigga, Luka, Luka Doncic's son. Like, come on, my nigga. Bradley who? Bradley who? Exactly, nigga. This nigga is day daddy. Rushed into it. Ant is shoving the comp into our faces every time he steps on the court. Fuck the high-flying acrobatics, the overwhelming scoring barrages and lightning quick first step, the cutthroat trash talk, the irrevocable confidence, even the commercials, the energy, the charisma. Where all right, others nigga, nigga glazing, all right? Nigga glazing, all right? The commercials. <laughs> yeah, I remember the Michael Jordan commercial. It was Michael Jordan and Jamal Crawford dressed as a young Michael Jordan. That would never be anything. I'm sorry, Anthony Edwards. I'm not delusional enough to rock A1s in the middle of the street like I'm rocking Jordans, bro. I never, bro. You're going to have to somehow make that shoe a, 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 a fashion icon because that shoe looks like a straight basketball sneaker, bro. But if he keep playing like this till he wins the race, if I see this nigga in the finals, I'm rocking A1s with jeans, nigga, and a black puffer with my New York brim on everything I love, bro. I'm rocking an A1. But until then, nigga, shoe line, you will never be compared looks and the way he's looking like nigga meh. seem to always be leaving one or two boxes unchecked anthony edwards pretty much checks them all some fans are even saying he looks like mj which he doesn't he just has a what you got your mommy lips you got your mommy ears but you got your daddy's forehead you got your daddy's eyebrows. You got your daddy's eyes. Nigga, you got your daddy's nose? Nigga, you got your daddy's jawline? Nigga, what's up with you, nigga? Your mom definitely smashed your dad, bro, because this, this is your dad. And the hairline kind of similar, too. Just the ears and, the, and, and you, got, you, know, you got your mom's ears, your mom's lips. Same, you know, monkey nose, eyebrows, eyes, forehead, hairline. Yeah, that nigga is definitely uh, Michael Jordan's son. But for the sake of fun, we'll let them run with that. According to Chris Broussard, who reached out to Jordan earlier this season, even Michael Jordan said he sees the similarities between himself and Anthony Edwards. Well, I reached out to the GOAT today. Oh, Michael I Jordan. I can't believe you still believe. I, this nigga's like a, yo, like you're 5 million years old. You still think he's the GOAT? Give it to the king, bro. The nigga fucking 39 years old. Like, what? Whatever, bro. <laughs> Jordan said there are similarities in their games. He agreed. Oh, so, it, Jordan said there's similarities. There's similarities, all right? And in many interviews over the past year, Edwards has addressed the comparison, stating, although he can't deny it and he sees the similarities, he would rather it all just stop. But when you're doing the things Ant is doing right now, how could we possibly help ourselves? Now, Edwards has only played in 18 career playoff games, not enough to crack any all-time NBA postseason leaderboards. Word. But we can see how Ant stacks up against MJ through his first 18 playoff games, where despite Ant being historically great- Jesus fucking Christ. First 18 playoff? First of all, bro, first of all. <laughs> now, I might see why y'all niggas call Michael Jordan the GOAT. 
I might see why, bro. Because there's no way in your first 18 playoff games you averaged 38 points. Nigga averaged almost 40, bro. And here comes Mr. Motorcycle with the fucking noise, bro. My apologies, y'all niggas. Uh, I took so long. But yeah, bro, like I was saying, this nigga is a fucking... He was a god in his first 18 playoff games, bro. Nigga dropped 40, 6, 6, and 3 with one block. But then again... Damn, and you only dropping 20. I mean, you dropping 30 with 5, 4, 1, and 1. I mean, defensively, he's good. You know, assist-wise, he's good. Rebounds, similar. But points per game, you just can't. You just can't compare it, bro. Michael Jordan is still in a completely different tier of his own. He scored more, rebounded more, made more assists. Pretty much every metric outside of shooting efficiency, Mike was on another level. Michael had a far worse team to start his playoff career, which probably led to him being required to do more on the court. True. But there is no denying that he is still the gold standard, even from the very beginning of his career. And this is where a lot of people get caught up in this whole comparison. Ant is incredible. He's what the NBA needs right now. But Michael Jordan was pretty unanimously the best player in the NBA by his third season. And by his fourth season, he had already made an all defensive team, multiple all NBA teams. Damn, one def nigga won an MVP by the end of their fourth regular season. He won MVP, third all NBA, first all defense, defensive player of the year, rookie four time. Oh, nigga, nigga, chill out, bro. Okay, okay. See, this is where you got to start seeing stats like this. And I'm like, okay, Michael Jordan, you know, now I understand why this is such a humongous debate. But it's just like my glorious king would never, ever, there would never be another LeBron. You feel me? And I feel like we could all agree, right, that there would never be another Michael Jackson. You, you can you you understand what I'm like you like you get what I'm saying like there would never be another Michael Jackson bro this nigga was in what 1985 and had the whole city of fucking Indiana just fuming for the niggas you know what I'm saying and then you got Michael Jordan the quote unquote greatest player of all time but he's not but there's so many carbon copies so many carbon copies you feel me so many kobe ants carbon copies trying to be like mj you cannot be a god you feel me you cannot be a goat because he's a goat for a reason like there would never be another tiger woods you feel me like there there, there would never be another cristiano ronaldo or another messi you feel me and there will never be another LeBron James. You want to know why? Because they're all goats. They're one of one. There's multiple of him. Different versions. Alternate universes. Kids. There will never be another LeBron. Which is why he's the GOAT. Defensive player of the year and a league MVP. Anthony Edwards is great, but he is projected to make an All-NBA team for the first time this year in his fourth season in the league. How could we possibly compare a young star who is just now ascending to superstar status to the greatest player of all time? According to Basketball Reference's similarity score metric, the most similar player to Michael Jordan throughout NBA history was Oscar Robertson. But this metric only considers the shape and quality of a player's career, not how they actually played or their skill set. If we refer to Crafted NBA's historical similarity app, which factors in everything a player does on the court, from their defense to their offense to their efficiency and creation and everything in between, the closest thing to Michael Jordan in year four was Clyde Drexler in 1988, followed by a bunch of Kobe and Dwayne Wade seasons. If we limit our list of eligible candidates down to the pace and space era or the last 10 NBA seasons, then the most similar player to MJ is actually 2015 Jimmy Butler. Okay, which makes sense because that's his second son. I forgot. Um, Michael Jordan has like 11 kids, and two of them are in the NBA. Jimmy Buckets is, uh, I think, his third-born son, and Anthony Edwards. Followed by Oladipo oh, in 2016, Shea Gilgis-Alexander in 2020, and Bradley Beal in 2018. 
Anthony Edwards doesn't even crack this list until the 7th and 8th spots with his 2022 and 2023 seasons. So again, why now and why him of all players to resurrect this next MJ tag? Well, because being good and even playing a similar game is just a sliver of what makes Anthony Edwards like Mike. In terms of play style, Ant is probably closer to a young Dwayne Wade than he is to Jordan. And I think most fans are aware of this. True. But for a lot of fans, it's not that Anthony Edwards plays exactly like a young Michael Jordan. It's that he makes us feel the same way a young Michael Jordan made fans feel 35 years ago. He doesn't just put together crazy dunks, he electrifies the crowd and gets us on our feet. The kind of moments that leave you and your buddies buzzing about long after the game is over. He doesn't just take over games, he talks trash while he's doing it. And he's got a pretty solid track record which of backing is, it up. Which is great, bro, which is great. The nigga, there's a game seven today, chat. There's a game seven. Because this nigga said, I'll see you in game seven, bro. Who else says some shit like that and could back it up if it's not Larry Bird or Kobe Bryant? It's fucking Michael Jordan. And who he looks more like? Michael fucking Jordan. This nigga said, I'll see y'all in game seven after he lost in game five. Demolished them in game six. Demolished them in game six. And he didn't even do that good. I think he dropped like 27 points. But he demolished them, bro. Fried, deep fried. Barbecue chicken alert, nigga. He's not just a part of a winning team. At just 22 years old, he is leading a winning team. He's not just really good. He's hungry and he's driven and his larger than life character and skill set and flair only grow larger in the biggest moments. Nasty Even man, off bro. the court, his mannerisms, mentality, and personality have Jordan written all over it. Being incredible on the court isn't the defining factor that provokes MJ comps with Edwards. In fact, even before Ant was dropping jaws on a contending team, many scouts and analysts made note of how eerily similar Edwards was to a young Jordan, dating all the way back to 2021 and long before we knew he would be I this special. You, when the nigga did like a nasty dunk, I think he did a dunk in 2021, bro, where he literally jumped over someone. I'm like, yeah, that's some Michael Jordan shit. That's the first time I'm, I brought that up. Sure. Saying Anthony Edwards reminds us of Jordan isn't saying we think he's going to win six titles or be the greatest player of all time. It's saying that we saw Michael Jordan play and now we're seeing Anthony Edwards play and the similarities are just staring us in the face. Now one thing I know for certain is that people who watched Michael Jordan play are the last people on earth to say anyone plays or resembles Jordan in any way. I mean, the guy is referred to as Black Jesus to some former players for crying out loud. That's a different so type of glaze, I'm just saying. And definitely, Kevin Garnett passionately declared to Anthony Edwards, he's like, yo, my good daughter. I mean, yeah, KG. And when KG former knows, players bro, begin to come out and rave about the similarities between him and Anthony Edwards, you can bet the comparison is as warranted as it's ever been. See, not every player that garnered a Michael Jordan comparison is similar to the next. There are players that play like Jordan, the footwork, the mid-range game, getting to the rim. There's players that act like Jordan, the psychotic competitors. There's the players that move like Jordan, the freak athletes. And then there's players who got compared to MJ for almost no other reason besides the fact that they were really good. There have been many players to fulfill one, two, maybe three of these attributes, but no one has ever quite lived up to all four. Here's an overly complicated diagram of these proclaimed Jordan successors, which boxes they checked and where they fell short. Players that acted like him. The only way where, where, let me tell you fucking something, right? You little bitch. Never say fell short to the standard of Michael Jordan to LeBron James. You know how this was, you see how fucking delusional niggas, niggas is hating on LeBron so bad that, that the fact that the nigga is, is at the, the fact that the nigga didn't win six finals MVPs and six championships, you know, and he did, and he went, and he didn't go six and no, that's the only reason why LeBron James is there, bro. Ain't that crazy? That's the only reason why LeBron James isn't there. But the nigga went to 10 fucking NBA finals, bro. And is the leading scorer. Beat Kareem's record. And niggas don't call him a scorer. He's the all-time leading scorer. 
fucking insane, bro. And the freak insane. athletes, players who are really good, and everything in between. Grant Hill, Allen Iverson, and Penny Hardaway got Jordan comparisons early on, but outside of just being really good, they didn't really have anything in common with MJ. DeRozan, Harold Miner, and Jerry Stackhouse played like Jordan, but they weren't quite the freak athlete that Jordan was. On the other end, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, and Ron Harper were freak athletes early in their careers, but that alone should have never been enough evidence to deem them the next Michael Jordan. But when you pair some of these attributes together, we'll start to find players who came closer to the Jordan comparison. LeBron, McGrady, Vince, Derrick Rose, like and LeBron Le and Tracy McGrady in the same conversation is fucking disrespectful, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. This is another LeBron slander. Why can't we just talk about Michael Jordan without LeBron being in the conversation? Last time I checked, bro, if a nigga's a goat, he's in his own conversation. You understand what I mean, chat? He's in his own lane, bro. LeBron is in his own fucking lane. Literally. Yes, I'm a diehard LeBron fan. My, my, my first name is literally LeBron, nigga. What are you talking about? And Bias were all freak athletes who were really good, but they didn't really play like Jordan, and they weren't psychotic with their approach on winning. Kawhi Leonard plays like Jordan, and he's really good, but he's an emotional robot with a 29-inch vert. Which leaves us with three players who have probably come closer to the Jordan comp than anyone else since Jordan's departure from the league. Dwayne Wade, who had a fairly similar first game of all, to Jordan. First of all, uh-uh. Put Kobe on everything. The fuck? Put Kobe on everything plus, bro. Because Kobe is a demon. Like, Kobe's work ethic compared to Michael Jordan, I think Michael Jordan was just a better player than him. That was it. That's the only difference between Michael Jordan and Kobe, is that Michael Jordan was the first. That's it. He, just, he was just gifted with that. He worked hard. But this nigga is not as gifted as Michael Jordan, which is why his work ethic is insane, bro. Put that nigga on everything. The fuck? Jordan this was respect. really good and was a freak athlete. And Kobe Bryant and Jimmy Butler, who play like Jordan, were and are really good respectively, and are both cutthroat competitors like Jordan was. But that's about as close as you're gonna get. Because Jimmy Butler isn't a freak athlete, and neither was Kobe. In fact, Kobe was often praised for making the most of his abilities, despite not being nearly the athlete Jordan was. And amongst all of these players and attributes, right now, Anthony Edwards is probably right about here. He acts like Jordan, he's a freak athlete, and he's really good. But he doesn't really play all that much like Michael did. There's definitely flashes of a young MJ in his game, with his ability to play above the rim, blow past defenders with a lightning quick first step, and of course, the mind-melting posters. That but one. just like everyone else that came before him, there are, of course, differences that separate Anthony Edwards from a young Michael Jordan. With that being said, these few differences aren't nearly enough to beat the allegations of similarities. Some people have mentioned that they never saw MJ play live, but watching Ant might be what it must have felt like. Fans Probably. that did watch MJ play testify that it was in fact just like this. With a generation of megastars entering the last stages of their careers, fans of the NBA have been speculating who the new face of the league might be. And there's a lot of great candidates. Maybe it's Tatum or Luka. It was looking like it might be Ja Morant for a moment, but the off-court issues have stunted that option. SGA put up a Jordan-esque stat line this year, so maybe it's him. Jokic has been the best player in the league for the last few years, but I'm not sure if anyone would consider him the face of the NBA. Because being the face of the best basketball league in the world is about more than just being the best player in the league. You need charisma, marketability, you need to resonate with the masses. You need to put together big moments and absurd highlights that inspire even non-NBA fans. We want to know that you love the game just as much as we do. Commercials and endorsements, candid and endearing interviews that connect with the fans, a no-excuse workhorse mentality with a superhuman set of skills to contrast it. Kobe Bryant only won one MVP in his 20-year career, but he was the face of the NBA for about a decade. LeBron carried the torch for the majority of some of our lives, and despite not being the best player in the world anymore, he's still probably the face of the league. You know why? Because he's the best. Steph was as <laughs> likable and relatable and inspiring as a superstar can get. A very unexpected but revered face of the NBA for many years. Anthony Edwards looks like he might just be the next player to grab the torch and lead the league into a new era. 
The kid's got the whole package. His team loves him, the league loves him, the fans love him. Maybe because he ignites us, inspires us, and reminds us of why we all love the game. But maybe it's also because he reminds us of a player who did all of those things years ago. That too. A great video. Um, I just don't like the fact you did a LeBron James slander, but we gonna I'm gonna let that slide because you know I'm big, I'm big Brian, big Brian fan. Uh BBF. But um I ain't gonna lie to you. Game seven is tonight. And if he cooks the nuggets, bro, he's beating the Mavericks and he's gonna beat the Celtics in six games, chat. And he's gonna be the face of the league. Which is crazy, but that's how it's going to be.